17. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if we could all please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our February 27, 2017 meeting uh, minutes for open session and executive session meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes. Second. February 27, 2017 open session minutes as written. I have a motion for the open session minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Abstain. Abstain. So we have three and one abstention. Oh, um, also, I'd let me um, make an announcement that uh, Selectman Stewart will not be here this evening. Um, he's not feeling well, so he's, he will not be here. Um, and then I may have a motion for the executive session minutes, please. Mr. Chair, I move approval of the minutes for February 27, 2017, executive session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Three and one abstention. Okay, moving along to communications and announcements. Um, we're going to take slightly out of order. Um, we will get to the Osgod Committee report review. I, re I promise you that. We're all waiting for that. We'll get to that. But first, um, we would like to recognize there's two times, well, there's many times that this is a very enjoyable job. Um, a lot of time when we get to welcome new employees to the town, it's very enjoyable. And when we get to say um, goodbye, it's not so enjoyable, but I know it's starting the next chapter in, a, in, a, in your life. And, and um, so tonight we are honoring or recognizing Deborah Rillahan, who has been um, the town health nurse for 21 years. I'll read the, um, the certificate. Uh, for over 21 years of dedicated service to the town as a public health nurse, your professionalism, dedication, and integrity have been a credit to yourself, the health department, and the entire town of North Andover. Thank you on behalf of the town of North Andover, and the best to you in your retirement. Um, presented by the North Andover Board of Selectmen. While well, you are yeah. going up, can I say this? Something Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're Mr. Chair, I'd like to just say that, you know, ha my contact especially with our senior citizens, that Deb has gone above and beyond. I know a few people personally that, frankly, their lives at many times depended on. I think you know one that I'm speaking of in particular. Um, due to your hard work, um, this town, and I'd say especially our senior citizens, have benefited greatly by your time here in North Andover. And thank you very, very much. Mr. Costello. Yeah. Mr. Costello mm -hmm. was an, a resident of town forever. He grew up here. He was a probate court judge. And he didn't have a lot of family. And him and I became very close. Um, and for, I would say, my, my family knows him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I would say, I probably saw him for 15 years. In the past, I don't know, maybe 10, um, we had a, a spot every Friday at 4.30, and a spot was a Manhattan. <laughs> and I never knew what a Manhattan was until I met John. And he said, and dear, nobody makes a spot like I do. <laughs> and he would say, you know, you can have one, but you know, you're driving and I'm a little worried, you know, if you want a second one, I'll make it weak. But, um, you know. True confessions now that you're leaving. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It was 4.30, so <laughs> it was not one minute before. It took me, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that was like the best part of the job was, and I'm, I'm just, that's going to make me sad because there were so many times that I felt like I had like five or six sets of grandparents at once. And if anybody knew how much I love my grandparents, then that's how close I, I became to these people. And I was part of their lives. I was at birthday parties, anniversary parties, and I like, I'm just so thankful to have had that opportunity. And I have pictures of a lot of them, and I clean it out my desk. And you know, it, it was just, um, that was the best part. But the bad part about it is they, they die. And every time they died, I said, that's it. I'm not getting close to another 
you know, this is it. And I'm, you know, it's like saying I'm not going to get another dog. You know, no. that never works. It just because they find you just you just get you get close, and um, it, it was wonderful. And I, I'm thankful to have had that opportunity, and I'm I'm thankful to have had this job. It. it if anybody said to me in nursing school, like this is what I was going to do, I would be like, yeah, right. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be a pediatric nurse, and I'm going to hold babies my whole life. You know, and if they ever said, you know, you're going to smell the worst smell you've ever smelled in your life, <laughs> and, and you're going to be in rooms with trash that's over your head, yeah, and you're yeah. going to be trapping feral cats with Sue Northam because yeah. it is a public health emergency, I guess, yeah, it's and true. Yeah. you know, you're going to be picking up. Oh, dead crows! That was so gross, and you know, <laughs> picking up dead crows. You'd be like, "Well, wait a minute! I didn't learn that part in nursing school." And you know, one time I put the dead crow in that market basket bag, and I was driving back because you got to drop them off at Tewksbury, and I forgot to drop it off, and then went to market basket. So in comes, oh, God. in comes all the groceries, and it was like. The kid's like, Ma, that is so gross. You have the grossest job. I'm like, it's supper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just put it in the gr just put it, it in the fridge downstairs and forget about it. I, you know, I mean, it was just, um, it was, you know, it, it, it was crazy, and there was so many, uh, so many things that I never would have experienced if I just had a normal nursing job. I mean, it just wasn't, it just wasn't uh, anything that I would ever have expected um, to do. You know. Restaurants and emergencies and all the, you know, all the things that we prepared for. That thank God never <coughs> came, you know. But um, it always like would be 4:30 on a Friday. You'd get the call like, uh, uh oh, you know. And I'll just give you one last, one, one last, yeah, huh? yeah. I didn't want to interrupt. Spot. Yes, <laughs> one Friday at, at 4:30, we got the call, and you look over and you go, oh, you see like Commonwealth of Mass on the phone. It's like, oh God, I don't want to answer it. I answered it, and we did have we had a, quite a little emergency, and I um, had to call I had to call my son, and say, listen, you got to wait home because we got a problem, and I got to stay at work, and um, I, he said, well, what do I have to do? And I said, you don't have to do anything. Just open the door. I said, I'm having 60 kits delivered. I said, and all you have to do is put them in the put them in. The, what am I going to do with them? I go put them in the front hall, and he says, well, where are they coming from? I go Jamaica Plain. And he goes. How am I going to fit 60 in the front hall? And I'm going, oh my God, don't make a big deal about it. He goes, how big are they anyway? I go, they're not big, just throw them in the front hall. So at the end, I'm like, don't be such a baby. Jesus, just put them in the hall. And he goes, what am I going to do with 60 kids in the front hall from Jamaica oh. Plain? Oh. <laughs> Sue Sawyer and I laugh about uh, that. The difference in a uh, letter makes, huh? Yeah. 60 kids. Like, can you imagine 60 kids in my little front hall from Jamaica Plain? I'm like, they're not that big. They're from Jamaica Plain, you know? Oh, my goodness. They were stool sample kits, but anyway. So, Deb, definitely have a new appreciation for your job, and yeah. thank you for sharing so all it was that. It was that but kind of a job. Can you I didn't do it alone for 21 years. Can you introduce no. your family that's here with you tonight? Oh, sure. Yeah, this is my son, Casey. Number two son, number one son, Chris. <laughs> well, no, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> My little grandson and my other two sons couldn't make it, but I just want to say Awful. thank you. It, it really taught me a lot. I was I was privileged oh. to um, have and had to, this And to job. your family, thank you for sharing your mother with you with <laughs> us and your grandmother for 21 years and taking those calls and knowing you know she's out there doing <laughs> really good work and and you know helping the community immensely. So thank you so much. And I'm thank sorry, you, did, did you have thank another? You. You um, really no, did. the only th there was one little thing that you left out of the Mr. Costello story, oh. who had something very unique in his education background, do you? <gasps> yes, Mr. Costello um, went to Harvard with John Kennedy. Yeah, and he, was he was classmates very, with JFK. Was, yes, yeah. he was very well spoken, very um, well read. Well read, um, oh, as they he say, he was he was a judge, and he had he you could sit, I could drink spot after spot with mm -hmm. him, because the stories he told, and like, it, so I was just so him. privileged to have had that time with him. And as they say, he didn't have any family. I helped him pack up his house when he had to, you know, move on. But the other thing about John and the other thing about this job was that there was just such cooperation um, between the fire department and the police department. So many times it would be, because uh, I lived in Andover at the time, and something would happen, and I'd call the EMTs, and I'd go, will you guys go check on John for me? And they always did. And they'd always call me back and go, Deb, he's okay. Mm -hmm. 
you know, or no, he's not. And then it was like, uh oh, okay. Because he could, you know, when he got older, he could be a little difficult. And, um, but they were so, like, that's the difference between this town and I think other towns is that um, I, I've just noticed, personally noticed the difference that here, no matter what it was, you know, hey, hey can you help me? Can you help me do this? Can you, I can't get this guy out of bed or whatever. They would be there in a minute. And, and that, that cooperation in working with, um, with those kind of people are just wonderful and it made the job great. I'm going to miss those times. I really no, am. I can't gonna, believe it's been 21 years. We're going to miss you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you, Deb, your retirement. So Great week. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Moving on with communications and announcements. Um, so we're going to have a um, an update tonight from the Osgod Review committee. Um, if we recall, about a year or so ago, we put this committee together to study um, the current um, bylaws in the 40R of Osgood Landing, and um, or Osgood Landing, not Osgood Landing, Osgood Landing, and, and uh, come back and to the board with, with some recommendations or some options on what um, they feel can happen. And I was a part of this board as well as um, well, I'll let, I'll let um, Eric introduce the board tonight. So, thank you, Mr. You, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start off uh, real quick uh, thanking uh, not only Dick, um, but the other members of the committee. Uh, two others are here tonight with me as well Lynn Rudnicki from the Planning Board and Ellen McIntyre from the ZBA. Uh, we also had John Mabin from Conservation Commission. And uh, Alexandria Jacobs is here as well. She was an uh, alternate from the ZBA. Um, also present today is uh, Attorney Ro Michael Rosen, uh, representative of the property owner uh, during these meetings. Um, and so I want to thank him for his time as well. I think um, I'll keep this really at a high altitude. Uh, circulated a draft memo uh, to board members for review. Um, the memo pretty much outlines uh, what we've come up with after, as uh, Dick mentioned, a little over a year, uh, some meetings. And um, uh, that me memo is now in final form. We met earlier uh, today at 6. Uh, there's no changes to that memo, but I have uh, provided a copy with uh, the proper letterhead and all that to Larry to file. Um, to really give a rundown of that memo, the uh, if you remember, the purpose of uh, the committee was to see if there were any recommendations uh, to modifying the Osgood bylaw to help make it um, maybe more effective if indeed it needed those changes. Um, and uh, while we certainly recognized and had a fair amount of discussion on some of the text or textual um, challenges of the bylaw that could be corrected. Uh, what we kept coming around to was the over uh, arching belief that any modification to the bylaw or any changes to the bylaw uh, needed to be considered in the much grander uh, scheme of the master plan process that uh, we are now undertaking. And that it really didn't make sense to look at this as a standalone situation. Um, so with that in mind, and that is the recommendation of the committee, is that um, any proposed changes or the, or the bylaw itself or the, the overlay itself be considered as part of the uh, master planning process and the, uh, in context with the corridor itself, what we call the Route 125 corridor, which is basically from 125 and Sutton Street to the Haverhill line. Um, we offered up three or considered three options to present to the board as to what you do in the interim, uh, one of which is just leave the, the bylaw in place as is. Uh, another was uh, we talked about seeing if we could place a moratorium on the, the bylaw, which state regulations does not allow uh, it to us to do that in any effective way. Um, 
and then three uh, repeal of the out, uh, the bylaw itself. Um, those are out there for your consideration. We've kind of laid out what each sort of means. Um, the property owner has offered up. Uh, you'll notice in the memo uh, with regard to the moratorium option, for lack of a better description, um, that the property owner uh, offered to enter a voluntary covenant uh, not to present. Uh, there was a lot of concern about the 530 units in certain parts of the of the overlay, and and do they again? Do they make sense today, where we are today? Um, and so what would happen, we didn't want anything moving forward that might run against what the master plan uh, process would identify as the proper courses. Um, I think we're all aware and understood that and on the same page about it. And again, the property owner offered uh, to enter a covenant that would be recorded um, and would run for a defined period of time basically to get through town meeting this year and to next town meeting in 2018. Um, and uh, while that is not an ironclad uh, guarantee, uh, it's certainly uh, something that I think uh, gives some comfort uh, to any risk that we might, for lack of a better term, any risk we might think of uh, certain projects going forward. The likelihood of that doesn't seem uh, all that high. Um, but it's something, again, to consider. Uh, it's something that town council has listened to and would entertain a, uh, and, and re certainly review it if that's something that the board, uh, meaning the board of selectmen, was uh, interested in pursuing. So just to lay something out, Mark, the expectation is that at some point the, the committee has made three recommendations back to the board. Obviously, uh, decisions aren't going to be made tonight. Uh, those three options, I think Eric uh, certainly summarized. Uh, two of the options, uh, one of the op one of the three options, the option which is the repeal, requires would require a board action in the form of a town meeting warrant article. The other two options do not require town meeting associated action, right? So it, it would seem as a recommendation that the board um, should want to spend some time discussing that at its next meeting. Uh, and decide how you want to proceed because if it needs to be on the warrant or it's going to be on the warrant, then obviously uh, we'd need to make sure that the warrant is prepared in such a way that that would happen. The other two options, this uh, moratorium covenant option doesn't require town meeting action. That's something within the purview of the board itself. And obviously if there was no action, then no action is required by the board. Um, I have suggested to the committee, first of all, let me, uh, this is, I think has worked out as the board intended. A group of people with specific interests in land use uh, came together, had a lot of meetings. It afforded, as I said to the committee, an opportunity to bring the developer or owner uh, to the table and have the kind of conversations that sometimes are best had outside of uh, specific meetings about a particular permit or a particular land use. Uh, I have recommended to the group that they don't provide their individual opinions as to which one they chose, because as the policy setting board in this community um, this is a significant enough issue that I think it should lie with you folks. Uh, certainly they may have individual opinions and that's your option to ask them you know, what those opinions are, but where they may be traveling back to their individual board, planning board, zoning board, um, those are discussions they can have with their individual boards. But ultimately in terms of action steps um, for us proceeding, we just want to know uh, which option you'd prefer. Uh, again, probably at the March 22nd meeting and uh, it could go further than that, but if we get past the March 22nd meeting, it's not likely to be on this warrant. So I, I did sit on this board and attended most of the meetings. I did miss a few. I t attended most of the meetings, and there was a lot of good discussion. Uh, the property owner had representation there most of the time, and sometimes they were there as well. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot going on in there, and you know, obviously we, we discussed and looked through the, the bylaw, and they didn't seem, as Eric said, to make a lot of sense to try to nitpick pieces of that bylaw because there was there was really so much in there and you know you start pulling on one thread you never know what you're going to unravel so we you know looked at it hard and and uh, came up with three options and i want to commend the the group for the uh, effort that they put in to get to this point um there was obviously a lot going on in that time frame as well there were other um 
things um, going on in Oscar property that um, kind of delayed things a little bit. And then we've, you know, obviously we've got some stuff coming up in the future as well as we've got some Warren articles that will be uh, uh, on the this year's town meeting. So, uh, and and as Eric said, with the um, with the master plan effort being undertaken, um, we want to make sure we look holistically at that Route 125 corridor, and again, not take into account any just spot zoning and say, okay, we're going to do this with 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 Osgood Landing, and then potentially. Um, you know, as we look at that and other development comes along around 125, now we've got to reopen that 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 that, that box to, to try to make changes. So it was really to try to encompass that that master plan and obviously, you know, what we've got coming up at town meeting, to, you know, um, and, and what we'll be discussing there as well. So any comments or questions? Tracy, you look like you, you've got a bunch loaded up, I can tell. No, no, <laughs> no? actually I don't. I was, I was very impressed by this. I've kind of, you know, I've, I've been around the last decade, so I, I, <laughs> I've, I've watched this evolve and devolve and evolve again. So um, I, I love the, as you said, the holistic approach to it all with the entire 125 corridor. I think that you know, it's probably, without a doubt, the wisest way to go. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a, 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 a ton of questions, truthfully. I, 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 think that, um, I think that, if anything, that what we'll see down there is probably going to evolve at a quicker rate than, um, than it has over the last decade, that's for sure. I, thought, I, I think that this is best summed up, given what we're, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. What could be going there by the line looking at Osgood as an island could very well prove to be counterproductive yes. to Hanover's master planning. And that's, yes. Um, we didn't really talk about the master plan, I think, when they were last before us. No. Um, but it's a good good way to put everything in perspective that when everybody talks about development in North Andover, that's inevitably you know one of the top three, absolutely one of the top three things that people talk about. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, this was needed, um, but it are. Uh, that line, I think, just best sums it up that if we're talking about our whole community, that's such an important piece that we shouldn't just be looking right. at it as that islander spot. Exactly. Zoning. And I, I'm, I'm very grateful to this particular committee, too, because I, I think you brought together you know, a good group of minds to really take us yeah. a strong look and focus at, at that, the, the whole area. And it was probably long overdue, so I'm very grateful for your work, too. So are there any questions on any of the options that are being presented before us tonight? So um, i just sum up again, and, and Eric did a great job, but the first one is just keep everything in place, keep everything as is. The second one is to place this, um, I'm going to use the word voluntary moratorium by the by the property owner to, um, to agree to not develop the property for uh, with the 530 units during the time that we designate as that moratorium. And then, of course, the last one is to repeal it altogether. And I think, again, we won't be voting on that tonight. This was really an informational mm -hmm. for you, for all of us, to, uh, to, uh, be under to understand it. And then when we meet on the 22nd, um, we can certainly discuss it more at that point and vote a recommendation at that time. So um, I would welcome the committee to come back that night um, and, um, you know, and we'll talk about it then. But um, are there any other questions or comments for the committee? Well, that's what I see it as. No. Oh. Thank you. When it came to option three for the, for the full repeal, because it would require a two-thirds vote at town meeting. So we'd have to, again, this, is, this goes along with the last conversation we had with, with Osgood Landing wanting to change to allow marijuana um, the marijuana zone to extend to them, and we said you'd have to convince town meeting, right? You'd have to go back and tell voters and, and the people attending that, oh, we want to now make this change. What was the discussion like, either among the committee members or, or any concerns about going to town meeting one year and saying we now want to repeal the zone and then going back whenever the master plan is done, perhaps it will recommend a different type of, of overlay or maybe just keeping it as is, but if there is a recommendation moving forward going back then to town meeting yet again, did, I don't know if that's, I haven't really reflected on that. I mean, I think that. Well, I think that's part of, you know, that's probably part of the concern and why recommendation two was there was to, you know, give that master plan an opportunity to, to evolve a bit and mm -hmm. to be able to come back and 
with the recommendation for the corridor. So that's that's why option two was there. You know, in in that case, is to give that that a chance for that that plan to come to life. And and option three was um, was there as well because it was discussed quite quite a bit in in the group. And um, you know, there's a lot of reasons to consider that option three as well. Um, but we wanted to you know we wanted to present a kind of a you know almost a spectrum of of options in this case. I think you did a good. I, I think you did a good job of, of good job. really. Those are the only three options, right? Before us, it's either do nothing, mm -hmm. an informal agreement, and I know it's more complex than that, or you know formally going and. And I think we tried to answer your question. We tried to um, have this again. These options were discussed even before the latest developments of the site or the mm -hmm. proposal for the site, and we tried to keep this as a, it stands alone in terms of what we focused on. We had a focus specific to the Osgod overlay. Um, and so, I mean, we're not naive. We understand the other discussion is going to come in at some point. It does maybe complicate, but it's something we wanted this to understand. These options stand respective to the Oz, the overlay yeah, themselves. I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's when, I look, when I look at it, I mean, for me, it's, I, I, I lean towards option two, in particular if you have that, that, that agreement with the, the current owners. And I say that only, I mean, am I supposed to say that out loud yet or not? I don't because know. It doesn't matter. Who cares? I have one meeting left. I'll say what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, I, but I only say that because I'm, I think Phil kind of um, touched on it that my concern is, is heading into town meeting with um, what else is already on the table, what, with, with the, the confusion, uh, is any of it ready for prime time in May? Probably not. Will we con confuse voters and when we, you know, town meeting voters and when we, we do, or you all do, come back next year with, you know, maybe a more solid um, ideas and plans and let us not forget too you have to engage DHCD in this and it's not just a town it has to go to the state I, I mean I agree with you there's so much going there's on there's just so, so much just, we just have to kind of right. see how things I'd hate to sour people for anything forward because we don't lay it out appropriately I, the first time that's just my take I, I agree with you that's I'll yeah. just be in the audience and, this and year there is also, not that it's a huge financial but there is a financial piece of it too for repeal where you know we did get six hundred thousand yes, dollars from did. the state and that would have to be returned uh, returned at some point so, so. so also considered. not that that's a reason to not consider no, it's repeal not, but, but it it's, it's 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 uh it's out there it's something so. to consider right it is, yes, it is definitely a part of the uh, an ingredient in the recipe okay any other questions for eric again thank you okay. no, I thank you all yeah. thanks everybody um for Thank all you. the time you spent into doing this, putting this together. <clears throat> okay. Um, any other um, communications and announcements for tonight? Anybody have anything else? Anything coming up? Um, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. Um, nothing? <laughs> I, I, yeah, green community designations. Oh, oh, thank you very much. So um, this last week we were um, we were awarded by the state of Massachusetts uh, um, a grant in the in the amount of one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars as a result of our um, designation as a green community, which. Um, we have Laurie Roselap to thank mostly for that, as she really took that upon herself. And um, brought, well, when I say took it upon herself, it, it, it required um, a vote of a town meeting, but she really was the one that researched it and got us to this point. Um, the final piece of that was last year when we voted for the stretch codes um, for building um, to follow the green. Um, the green building codes, and that was passed at town meeting overwhelmingly, and that was the last piece to get us to um, this uh, green community status. Uh, we're one of a um, hundred or so communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that now has that status. Um, last week, we had the um, Secretary of um, Energy here. Environmental Affairs, thank you. Uh, I just gave him, I gave him a promotion there. And um, as well as some other folks from um, from the state and the like lieutenant the, governor. Like the lieutenant governor. Yeah, well, I was going to say that. <laughs> that was the last one. And the lieutenant governor was here as well. And uh, we were given that award 
um, last week. So great job uh, by everybody. And, um, you know, we are now a green community, and I think that really fits in well with the characteristics and ideology of this town because we really do have uh, a significant amount of green space and trails, and this is just another step in leaving this town better off than what we found it and, and ensuring that going forward we are looking forward and for our younger citizens and those coming behind us and really trying to take care of the town and the environment for those as well. Um, and for us too as we and get we over. Did, we actually got money as well. Yeah, hundred sixty nine thousand okay. dollars. Yep. So we'll be looking to how we can spend that. That money has to be spent on green endeavors like uh, fluorescent light bulbs or energy efficient or uh, cars, vehicles. We'll have uh, probably in the next um, couple of weeks give you an idea of the kinds of items that we, we think make sense in the context of what we're doing. So prospect of a, an electric vehicle, a town-owned vehicle that's electric, uh, which I think we need to eventually get trees. into for inspectors. Trees do not count. Um, <laughs> it's a good idea, but a lot of trees, uh, trees don't count. Uh, the possibility of some um, lighting initiatives that we didn't take place as part of the ESCO project and one school in particular that, that would uh, have a pretty quick payback and would save some energy. And then we're also looking at the streetlights, and we may need to start that with what's called the streetlight audit. Uh, we'll also be entitled to future grants uh, from the same fund, and we'll likely pursue or find some way to get the street light com streetlights completely converted because in the long term there's a lot of rebates and ultimately a pretty quick payback and then a lower electricity cost for the streetlights. So going to LED is, is uh, something that's certainly in the works. A couple of comments that uh, were made to me, uh, not, on, not on the camera at, at that meeting was, and I thought it was just such a wonderful compliment to all of us in North Andover. One was that all the beautiful open space that we have preserved and that people get to take advantage of from our trails and, and, and all, all the money that we put into it, it's, it's noticed in other communities, and I've heard that before. Um, and the other comment that was a little bit more subjective, but I thought it was one, the person said to me, I love coming to North Andover because it's such a quintessential New England town, and partly because of our open space. And I thought, that's like the perfect compliment I think you could give uh, to all of us in North Andover. So it was a good meeting. And we really caught Lori good. We embarrassed her for thanking her up a heap for her great job on this. And she was very, um, very modest about that award. But it was so deserving. It was that, deserving. That meeting, you had quite a few people from Salisbury and Rockport and their committees that did this. So, Lori, you did the work of an army. There you go. <laughs> Any other communication announcements? Any other huge ones that I missed like that? <laughs> okay, so let's move on to consent items then. The first on the list is um, the appointment of Lynn Savage as town accountant for a term commencing July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2022. Um, this is with great pleasure that I think we should be doing this. Once again, Lynn has served this town exceptionally well and has brought us, um, you know, brought us into really into the 21st century in, in all of our accounting methodologies and has won so many awards and, and has really uh, done a stellar job. So um, I would. Mr. Chair, I would great joy move approval on this one. She, one of the best hires, I interviewed her and it was, and boy, you were just never disappointed. So I, she's a great um, employee of the town and I, I think it's terrific. So move approval. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you, Lynn. Okay, so we're going to go for year number six, right? Is it year number six of the G, uh, GFOA award? How many years is that? No pressure. <laughs> six. No pressure. <laughs> six. Not so bad. Year. Very nice. <laughs> That's true. So you, set the, you set the bar too high for yourself. You make it look easy. <laughs> yeah. you do Lynn doesn't get to rest on her laurels ever. Nope. It's great. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. And then again, speaking of exceptional town employees, which we seem to have quite a few, 
Um, we've got Rick Gorman here tonight with us, um, Director of Youth Services, to discuss or to present the donation from the uh, various town athletic associations uh, for the uh, to support the athletic fields and facilities. Um, so, thank you. It's been our seventh year. Uh, this was a uh, for people that don't remember. Um, Probably about 15 years ago, we were dealing with some tough situations where EPW was not able to maintain the fields the way that we had been accustomed to do it. Uh, the town manager at that point in time and the DPW director came to our fields committee and basically suggested how we could work together. And uh, this fields committee has been outstanding uh, the last uh, 12 to 14 years now that we've been actually working on different things. And since 2010, we've established a, um, a fee that was charged to every registration and based on the amount of kids playing the sport, um, five, $10 per kid was tacked on and then in January of the new year we, um, we collect the money and um, we've been really good since 2010. Uh, prior to this year we had uh, donated $283,000 to the town. Um, we're excited that we are um, donating 43340 this year. Um, and the four major groups is the largest is our soccer association who has multiple sports, so they have the biggest uh, donation. Uh, the North End of Boosters Club is second, uh, and then our youth baseball program and our lacrosse program is our smallest program, but it's uh, 43340 that we're donating this year. Um, it is looked at on a yearly basis. Um, where the leagues have to go back and say, do we want to do this again? And um, every year it has been unanimous with their boards to continue to do this. Um, so I see this happening, continuing in the foreseeable future. Uh, working with the town manager um, uh, to see basically at, at what point in time we will do things with this money, whether it be creation of new fields, uh, enhancements to facilities like uh, the Kittredge Gym, uh, which was uh, some money that was used for that, as well as you know eventually our need for new fields with maybe losing the loosened fields or whatever. So we have a nice little nest egg that the town has, uh, and we couldn't do it without the youth organizations. So tonight we're donating that and that has been donated. Great. Thank that you. the Board of Selectmen accept the donation of, is that right? $43,340, um, 23330 from North Andover Soccer Association, 10120 from the Booster Club, 6530 from youth baseball, North Andover Youth Baseball, and additional $3,360 from the North Andover uh, Lacrosse to be used for the town's athletic fields and facilities. Correct. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any just, further discussion? Just, so that, that gets deposited in the, in the revolving fund, Andrew, or does that automatically get tacked on to, to just DPW or... No, like they come back with a recommendation. We, we okay. have a separate um, revolving account that the town manager uh, controls, and it's for basically new fields slash facilities. We did make an addendum a few years ago to add facilities to it, not just fields. So it cannot be used for our fields maintenance account. So if we needed to do some maintenance, you could not take that out of that money. Um, we rake recommendations to the town manager, and then he would decide on whether it's a worthy enough project to expend on. Rick, do you want to share the, the current recommendation? Because we can... Uh, regarding the netting yes so we have a, a new project that we're um, that we've a committee has recommended to the town manager and it's a, a, to deal with a safety issue that maybe Tracy would know we are uh, we're putting up a net netting system at Kyle Thomas which has errant baseballs have been landing in people's laps and uh, so we actually have some so this would be something that if the town manager uh, approves would we be using that money to do that we have liked the fact that quite frankly we haven't spent a lot of money on that because we are looking to build up an account Account that um, can help us with things like this as well as new fields but in the same breath our youth groups who are donating the money want to see some of their money obviously spent not just put in there so you know I think we've had a great relationship with the town manager and the fields committee on this and I, I I'm really excited I think we'll continue also awesome. okay so we have a motion and a second do we, um, uh, all those in favor Aye. 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 Tracy? Aye, I'm sorry. I was talking. You only got a few votes left. Let's get on it. <laughs> All opposed? All about it. Yes, yes. Opposed? Yes. Okay, so 4 0. Um, and I think you're going to stay up there. I am. Okay. So the second thing is we are back for our annual request for the. Uh, 
the Board of Selectmen to approve us holding the annual carnival. This is our 27th carnival. Uh, we have been very fortunate the last eight years that we're actually having it at 1600 Osgood. So in years past, obviously, it was on town property, and it was uh, a Board of Selectmen had to approve to have the town. Technically, it's not on town property in terms of 1600s, but we do do a courtesy that we want the Board of Selectmen to approve that we're actually doing this. Um, we have met with the owners once again, and they have been great. Um, they have approved this again for 2017. We have to take this every year, and as you know, things may change in the future, but it has been a good place for us in terms of um, parking, space. Um, the little bit of a negative it is it's a little bit outside of North Andover in terms of the old days when we used to have it at the middle school. Um, but I think it, it makes all, all the purposes that we have there are good ones, and uh, we're looking forward to another one. And again, as we do every time that year, we hope that we get good weather, and we always get one rainy day, but hopefully for good weather this year. So we're working again with 1600 Osgood. They've approved it. We're doing the proper paperwork. My next step will be... Um, with our new Department of Public Works director, we will be doing our annual meeting with all the departments that are affected by the carnival. Uh, it's worked out really well the last five years where we sit down and meet and each department head, fire, building, whatever, uh, explains to the vendor, Cushing Amusements, what they need to do and everything else. And it's worked out really well. So we're excited again and looking for you to support that we do it again in 2017. Move approval. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Other than to send a letter of thanks to Properties. Thank you. Yeah, and, thank you. And good luck again. Appreciate as usual. it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All set. Thank, thank you, you very much, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> um, moving along, we have a request to surplus some vehicles um, from the fire department. Um, we have a number of vehicles that we'll be surplusing, and I believe the intent is to use some of those as a uh, trade in for a new vehicle. Um, so, um, move that the Board of Selection approve the request of Fire Chief McCarthy to surplus a 2014 Chevy Equinox, a 20, 2008 Ford Ranger, and a 2015 Do Dodge Charger, all to be traded in for new for a new command vehicle. A motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Um, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. All right. Next, um, we need a vote to open the town warrant. So this is for the town meeting. So we'll open it. We will accept the warrant, and then we'll vote to close it. So first, I need a motion to open the town warrants. Mr. Chair, I motion that we move to open the 2017 annual town meeting warrant. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, for no, uh, for, for nothing. Um, so we are now, the warrant has been opened. Um, we need a motion. Uh, everyone has had a chance to review the current contents of the warrant. Um, we need a motion to accept the warrant as presented um, with the notion that there will probably be some addendums to it as we move forward. But at this point, we need to uh, accept the warrant as printed. Move that the Board of Selectmen accept the 2017 annual town meeting warrant as presented. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? So just for the purpose, for more for the mm -hmm. public. Um, so tonight, really, you're closing the warrant. As you're taking your first pass of the warrant, there will obviously be right. some additional modifications, reviews, and so forth. This is the official date that you're closing it for uh, citizen petitions, of which there are a total of five citizen petitions, one each for police and fire individuals who are looking for an extension beyond the, the maximum age to serve in those departments. We've seen those in the past. And three that are directly associated with the uh, 1600 Osgood facility and the um, uh, indication recommendation by their owners that they want the ability to uh, be able to cultivate medical marijuana. So three are for that purpose, two are for the extending the age on police and fire. Uh, the rest of it is uh, pretty straightforward, a total of 26 articles, a uh, few less than last year. We don't expect uh, uh, any other articles at this point, but obviously the review between myself and town council and Spurs Laugh and Ray Santilli will continue to make sure we incorporate all of the various thoughts moving forward. So you certainly will see it again, but this is the, the time that we close the warrant for citizen petitions. Okay. Okay, so 
Did I already ask a motion? Did I, I get a motion? Mm -hmm. No, we need a motion to accept. Yeah, I did it. Oh, you did. Yeah. I'm sorry. We had a second. So, any further discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've got our first. All right, now we need a motion to Move close the board. Move the board close the annual town meeting. We have a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. so we've opened it, we've reviewed it, and we've closed it. Perfect. And again, we will be, this is a living document up until a certain point, so we will be mm -hmm. probably looking at it again. Okay, <clears throat> um, so that gets us through consent items for this evening. Um, we have no old business. We have no new business. We have no public in the room, so we will go to uh, town manager's report. Well, I don't consider you public, you're the uh, technician. <laughs> People with headphones don't count. Uh, so the board, uh, we're moving fairly quickly. We're going through the finance process, and either uh, Mr. Santilli, myself, or Lynn Savage are, are sort of divided up the meetings and have been attending the various finance committee meetings. That process is moving on. I think the finance committee is meeting with the school committee this week and then some other town departments the week after that. So we're making it through that process. They've already voted on the capital plan without amendment. <coughs> We've made it that far. I uh, certainly would strongly recommend, given how fast the calendar seems to fly uh, this time of year, a review of the warrant, because obviously at an upcoming meeting not so long from now, we're going to ask you to vote on the individual articles. You certainly have the right to put those off to town meeting or before town meeting if you want, but we're getting closer uh, to that uh, date. Um, so whatever feedback you have relative to that, we're, we're, we're moving along fairly quickly. I think we're looking at around the 13th of April for the Finance Committee to give its final document so it can be inserted into the warrant and sent off to the printer. So you only have uh, one or two meetings, I think, Patriots before Day. that point. Yeah. It's always done around Patriots Day. Yeah, so a little bit before this year, but we're yeah. right on that uh, sort of benchmark. So other than that, we're uh, moving forward and things are, are going well. So yeah, so that we have a meeting on the 24th, I mean, I'm sorry, in April, I'm just looking at our April schedule. We have a meeting on the 3rd and, on, and then again on the 24th. Right. So it would be on the 24th that we would... No, you, you make the decisions. The warrant will be closed and off to the printer and printed by then. Uh -huh. So you make your final decisions on anything associated with the warrant at the April 3rd meeting. Okay. We'll uh, try to arrange uh, for uh, Mr. Simons on behalf of the CPC to attend either the 22nd's meeting or the 3rd meeting, so that can be included, so you can make a vote on that article if you're in a position to do that. But I would expect that uh, no later than the April 3rd meeting would be the date for making recommendations on the individual articles, unless the board chooses on that article that they want to wait to yeah. move it down sure. the line. So those, uh, that's how things are going to proceed. But again, I wouldn't expect dramatic changes to the warrant at this point. Most of the articles have been reviewed 10 times over a lot of them, the standard articles. Citizen petitions can't be amended. Um, so those won't be touched because they can't be amended, and, and I think almost every other article is pretty standard. There does appear to gonna, it does appear as if there's going to be a special town meeting inside the regular, like last year, for the <coughs> Special Education Reserve Fund. I don't have an exact amount yet, but I'd expect that to be the case. But other than that, the warrant is, as they go, pretty benign. Other than medical marijuana. It's okay. becoming benign. It's right. becoming benign. <laughs> Okay, um, anything else? Doesn't show. Exactly. Okay, <coughs> our next. Uh, did you have something? For the ask the manager. So yes. So, Lieutenant Spadilli's comment earlier about the community's got me thinking. Uh, several meetings ago, we had National Grid come in and discuss with us Reynolds Field and how the trees they'd be taking down, they potentially could be giving us new ones. Yes. In place. I don't know if there was any follow up with that. There has been, actually. Uh, there was a back and forth uh, during the time that. Mr. Thibodeau was here and then overlapped into Mr. Borgesi's work while he's been the acting director. Uh, there's going to be a total of 20 trees. 15 will be uh, purchased and uh, planted at the direction of Public Works by National Grid's arborists, arborist or arborists, depending. Um, the other uh, five will be provided to the town for our own staff to implement and install. I would expect as part of fiscal 18, uh, based upon some of the funding in the budget, I'd expect another uh, 10 to as many as 20 trees to be purchased by Public Works oh, by, our um, by our own town um, and and finding ways over the season to put those in based upon various requests we have and other places where rentals there was a series of smaller trees taken down and so I think we said to the residents as we would look to see where those trees came out they were worried about the cars being able to drive directly onto rentals I have taken a look myself at that it, it doesn't look like it would take more than 
one or two to prevent that from happening. So at some point as we get closer to where those installs would be, I'll provide a list to the Board of Selectmen so they're aware they are. So I would expect uh, during fiscal 18, between the spring of fiscal 17 and, and all of fiscal 18, I'd expect um, a minimum of 30. Uh, 20 are already coming from NGRID and mm -hmm. could be slightly more. Um, we do have a couple that should be replaced. They just didn't make it. Yeah. That were recently cleaned up. Edmonds. You want to just shoot me an email if someone has some particular things oh, yeah. that they've gotten as feedback? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know about that. So I'll, that's the, the only feedback right. I got, it was, it was kind of built they around I didn't realize. the so construction I, that's happening on, on Sutton Street as it goes into Lawrence right along the, the train tracks. So yeah, we've spoken specifically to the folks involved with that sort of gateway project. Yes. We have spoken to those people. That's separate from that, but we'll be taken care of. Okay. But, that, what and did that, you just say? So it was just the, the reason that got, this got me thinking is I was approached by a resident who was asking about the project along the train tracks. Yeah. And had asked about the trees that we had been told that we would get. And it was they're in. Whether or not. The shrubs that are in. They're, they're whether or not we'd be able to get some more trees over there to just help. It it I've spoken to the same resident who's met with John at the site and we've already said that we'll, within within the context of what logically fits there, yeah. we're supportive and we'll find a way to do it. Oh, that's great. The that's one, great. Thank you. While we're on that, the, um, that, that gateway, which which is, you know... Um, um, Beautiful. Yeah, it's great. My, my only concern is is how... how there, and I know this is going to... I'm going to... I'm, this is echoes of Selectman Nadella. But, and, and you know, but it is, the signs. I can't take the signs. I, I, I mean, I love the home of the 2017 uh, state wrestling champs. There's one particular group that is consistently putting their signs in inappropriate places. Can we reach up to them? Because they're taking away yeah. from... Broder and, son, Broder and Sons, who, who have done all the landscaping yes. at this gateway, you know, yeah, uh, the merchants yeah, who do all of this. There's, there's, there's yeah. one, one um, group in particular, which I don't, I'm not going to point out, but if we could reach out to them and ask them to stop placing it on yeah, these no islands. That people, yeah, other, other people invest their private money into. Yeah. No, we agree. Somebody yep. else's, somebody work. else's yeah. hard work and yeah. donation yeah. and dedication. We're stuck a pretty good balance where we tell folks there are certain places that we just we you can't just don't want them on the sign. Yeah. Yeah. So that we'll their own private property. Yeah, I you mean, know, I think it's absolutely it's appropriate when our sports teams win a state championship and that's those different. Types of things. Yeah, but we'll, we need, we do we'll need to designate a time period that that can be out there. I agree. Maybe a week, two weeks. Well, they're something. supposed to. Well, we would also want to. I'm not driving around pulling them out right. of the lawn. And we we <laughs> do depending where they are, but we want to just be cautious that they stay for the limited <laughs> time period and that they're not. What we don't want them to do is infringing on places where people have paid to improve an island, as right. an example. Oh, want to be cautious of that, but I certainly will take a look myself and we'll we'll address that with the group. Very well. It's not a school group. That's why it's b more bothersome to me. It's not. But but these different organizations for their fundraising, I, I know they're trying to get, they're very difficult to read, first of all. They should really be putting it on members' property mm. that are part of the organization. It's just, mm. it just. Or they could take a page out of <clears throat> Mike Zanakis' book, who, who today ran, this evening is running a, a fundraiser for the, yeah. North End of Emergency Association Sports Scholarship Fund, yeah. um, where they actually made signs because we're getting into election season, obviously. Well, we're in it, and they 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 did they went to the schools in different areas and and held signs this morning. That'd be and great. I, they, I thought it was for the event, for for the yeah. Um, yeah the fundraiser this evening, yeah. and I just thought it was a fun, neat way. That's a cool way. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a really neat way to get the word. Well, out. signs beget signs. Yeah. Does that make yeah. any sense? You all know how I feel about signs. Yeah. yeah. Just well, give me, give me a chance. Well, so I'll truly, take Selectman Nadella used to drive around town taking them no, off. I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. No. I am probably the uh, probably the only person in this group who can make this comment. I would also encourage uh, folks with no disposition to any one candidate that the idea of putting signs on public property or on property that is not obviously owned by someone who would have consented is also. Yeah. Yes. No, pull it up. Agree more. Listen, no, think, I'm not think, pulling up a political. Oh no, I think I'm I just think any, public property, so no matter what. I mean, that's yeah, but I think that, that it gets it the sets to grow a little bit. The only thing right. I could say, right. you know, what I mean. right. the only thing I can say is sometimes it's the, the person who owns the property doesn't realize, and they put it because I've run into that with some of my signs. It's like someone got a little bit too aggressive putting it near the street, mm. not realizing. 
um, that they got to keep it. Some of those. I, I was sent a photo today of a candidate sign taped up to the inside of the Thompson School, to the inside of the Thompson School window. Yes, and so I've been told that's been removed, but that's oh again. Oh I would, I would think, think that's there been removed. There was a candidate sign taped up on the inside of a Thompson School building window. <gasps> um, oh my! So that is really we haven't had that one. Okay, that was a new one from yeah. Like, Don't mention what it is. So yes, I think we're dealing with uh, two things associated with that gateway. One was to make sure that the any gravel that's finished by the contractor will be covered with loom, so we can seed that area. Yeah. And, Which I, and, I, I and believe we're looking at some trees as well. So we're we're uh, aware of that, and have been uh, Ms. Watson was first on that uh, sort of area, and we're focusing to get that restored in a way, and we'll look at the signs as well. It's Terry Hall. It was Terry. Yeah. Yes, we all. And Tracy. TNT. Mm -hmm. Great part about Terry is you say yes, and he continues to make other calls. Yeah. You know, it comes consistent. up with a new idea. He's, He's the best. best. Okay, any other estimators, comments? Any more you can think you of? Digging deep here. <laughs> what else do we have? No, we're good. I think we're. Are we breaking to one hours? We have enough. No. Well, no, but have we? Is everybody? Are they come. Uh, the last sure. Sunday, though. It's a highly secretive event. House. It's called the open house. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, March 26th, you got an email. Oh, about Tom Hall. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Was that a secret? No, 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 but <laughs> was that a secret? No, excuse me. No secrets. Some of us, no, some people didn't get back, so. Lori the tentative said, plan for the open house of Town Hall is March, the, the plan, sorry, for yeah. a move tentative. What's the times again? One to three. One, one to three. three. Uh, like it's March 26th from one to three. The last three. Sunday. Yeah. Open I think I responded. Open. I said I was right, right available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's why I, I didn't want to announce it. Everyone. Yeah, okay, so yes. we'll, we'll we really announce it like again at our next meeting, but the grand open or the ribbon cutting will be March 26th. Yeah, open house. And, and open house and ribbon cutting. Yes. We're going we're to cut our ribbon? We got the big scissors? Did we find uh, the big we scissors? Are, we have the big scissors. Yeah, we have the big well, scissors. We'll It'll be my last line, official duty no. as a... We'll cut that suspense thing up. As a, re, as a select yes. man. We're going to do like an internal. Yeah, yeah whatever. We have, we have um, scissors. Yeah, that will be your final. We used to lose them again. We lost them at the bread and roses. I was getting wait. <laughs> Chase those down. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so our next regularly scheduled meeting is going to be March 22nd. That's a Wednesday night Thank at you. seven o'clock, yes. right here Thank in this off, in this building in this room. Um, prior to that, however, we need to sign the uh, election ballot. Um, prior to March 20th. So I'll be sending an email to individuals to find out when you're available to have a short selectman's meeting to just call to order, and it'll be one agenda item to sign that, well, so far, one agenda item to sign that one, that ballot, and then we'll close out the meeting. So I'm thinking maybe um, either an early evening or an early or morning or something like that when someone, so I'll send an email and try to get a general yep. sense of when people are available. We do need to do it before March 20th, so it's going to be either this week or early or next week at some point. Yep. You just need a quorum, so three. Yeah, we just need three, so we'll, I'll send emails to you. Okay. I'll make it All right, I'll send out an email and we'll figure it out. We don't have to decide tonight, we just need three days to, we need three days, right, Laurie, to post it or two days? 48 hours. Okay. Um, any? Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, a 59-minute meeting. Don would have so been happy. <laughs>